hi guys welcome to my channel and on today's video we're going to be looking at the production possibility curve also known as the production possibility frontier so what exactly is this production possibility curve or production possibility frontier essentially it is a boundary which illustrates the maximum combinations of goods and services which can be produced in an economy or even by firms so let's look at how we can draw this PPC. So the first step would be to have your axes drawn. So notice I have my Y axis and my X axis. And for the purpose of this video, we are going to draw a PPC which is concave to the origin. Now please know that there are other types of PPC diagrams where we have a linear curve which is a straight line curve but for most cases what you would see is this concave to the origin curve here for the PPC which um, would illustrate increasing opportunity cost so notice when it's concave to the origin it is bold out it has this C like shape but facing the origin that is how you know it's concave so to illustrate production production possibility curve I'm going to look at the example uh, which we are, most of us are familiar with which would be buying doubles so everybody in Trinidad would have bought doubles from their favorite doubles vendor and you could write in the comments below where you think of the best doubles in Trinidad so you would normally go to your doubles vendor you would line up and you buy a doubles you buy a pie, you buy a sahina so the doubles vendor in some cases, I'm sure you would see that they would have staff when they're frying it on the spot. So, remember PPC is showing the maximum combinations that can be produced with a given set of resources. So, let's assume for simplicity that this doubles vendor, all he's making is doubles and alu pie. So, we're going to call our y-axis doubles or the quantity of doubles rather and on the x-axis we're going to look at how much alu pie can be produced so these are our two variables and I'm going to put my quantity here so we know that it's quantity and not price so we're going to look at the points on this PPC curve here and how it relates to our doubles vendor so if we're at a point such as here, let's call this point Z. It means that zero units of alu pie is being produced and all the resources are being put into doubles. All right, so we have Z units of doubles being produced. Likewise, if we're at a point such as here, we can call it W. It means then that zero units of doubles are being produced while a maximum of W units of alu pie is being produced. Anywhere along this line, this boundary, this frontier, this curve, anywhere along this curve is considered to be efficient points. As a matter of fact, they are considered to be what we call Pareto efficient or Pareto optimal. So we might have a point such as this. We can call this one A. And we can have another point such as B. So point A is just as efficient as point B, even though they are using different combinations of resources. A point such as, let's say here, point C. Point C is considered to be inefficient why is point C considered to be inefficient? C is considered to be an inefficient point because it is possible to get more units 
of let's say good alu pie without having to give up any doubles and you can see this from the graph so for example if you were to extend um, from point C this point here you can see that it is possible that we can get more units of alu pie without giving up any doubles so for example let's put some numbers let's say this is three units of alu pie this is uh, also three units of doubles let's just see it means then that we can get more units of alu pie let's call this 11 we can get more without having to sacrifice any doubles so it is inefficient likewise let's assume we want to keep the production at three units for alu pie but we want to get more doubles at three units of alu pie we can extend the point or extend the line rather up to here to give us a point of let's say 10 10 doubles so it is possible for us to get more doubles increasing from 3 to 10 without having to give up any any alu pie so that is why the point C is considered to be inefficient so how is it that a firm can have more or can produce more without having to give up from another good and this happens when we have things like idle resources not using your technology to the fullest for example if you're looking at the same double situation i'm sure you went to buy doubles already think about the scenario you see people working on so not everybody's be frying at the same time sometimes you might have somebody slacking off sitting down they're not using all the flour they're not using all the chana they're using all the alu they're not using all the oil all those things are resources that are there but if they're not using it, they're just lying around there. It means it has the potential to produce more without even buying more of these ingredients, without even buying more of these resources. So that is what is happening here. You have idle resources. And as soon as you see, okay, boss man come up, or you start out, you know, tell everybody, hey, you had to work, push some more. You would see that even though he's not hiring more staff or buying more ingredients, the output is able to increase. And that's because it was like idle resources and uh, idle labor around now sometimes you have a point such as this here you can call this one d which is outside the ppc curve this is what is called as unattainable given your level of resources however it is possible at some point in time for us to have a ppc curve which shifts outwards and we get a new ppc so we can call this one ppc one we could call the old one ppc zero so you have an outward shift so what could cause an outward shift of our ppc curve from ppc zero to ppc one it means that something would have had to happen with our resources not so meaning yeah would have either had a increase in resources or an increase in technology Looking at our doubles example again, if the owner brought even a whole set of other ingredients or let's say he has access to new technology, so instead of using a stove with only two burners, now gets a stove with ring burners with about six or eight, it means then you could really push your output, you could really produce more doubles, more alipi. The same principle applies to the economy on a macro level. The country but the economy can only produce a certain amount of goods but with increases in technology increases in labor force trade all these things allows for countries ppc to shift outwards and be more productive the reverse is also true where the ppc curve can shift inwards which is a reduction in the amount of goods and services a country can produce and usually these things would happen when you have crime, you have war, right? Think about it. If you have crime, it means people less likely to invest. So the economy shrinks. You have war. People would not produce it, would not be producing as much goods and services. So there are many factors which can cause your production possibility curve to shift to the right or to the left but what i really want you all to remember from this example 
is that when we have points on the PPC like Z, A, B, W, or any other points along the curve, those points are said to be efficient. Points such as C, which are within the boundary, are, are attainable but are inefficient. A point such as D, which is outside of the original PPC or any point further out, that is considered to be unattainable. However, with time and with an increase in technology, an increase in resources, it is possible for your PPC curve to shift rightwards so that a point such as D can now be attained. I am Ms. Lushu, and if you like videos such as this, Please like and share and subscribe to my channel.